Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Home Tennis Show. This one's going to be slightly shorter because we're moving the fitness session to Saturday. But first up, we're going to have a revisit of the Keep You Uppy Challenge. Make sure to keep sending your videos in. On Saturday, we're going to watch every single video you guys sent in. So if you want to be featured for sure, make sure you send that video in and we're going to revisit that first. After that, we have the second part of the interview with Ben Haran, who is my coach at Reeds School Tennis Academy, who's one of the best coaches in Great Britain for junior performance tennis athletes. So let's go. So guys, this week's challenge is how many keepy uppies you can do um, with a tennis ball. Make sure to send your videos in. We might feature them, so go to the link in the description or just DM us via Instagram on Tennis Brothers and we'll put the best videos in the next week in the next episode of the home tennis show so felix i'll let you go first no pressure okay well, what's a good score here i don't know i'm not i'm not the greatest at football i'm, okay. I'm gonna try and get five i'm going for a bit of a different approach i've actually got shoes on so all right here we go okay. i'm a bit nervous <laughs> so guys felix ended up with four <laughs> so i doubt i'm gonna do any better one two Lucian ended up with three. Um, that's a pretty decent attempt. Maybe should have worn shoes for the last one. On this week's interview section again, we have Lucian's coach, Ben Harron, head coach of Reed School Academy and LTA Regional Development Centre. And we're going to ask him a few questions. Hi, Ben. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, thank you. So the first question we have for you is, what would be an ideal training programme for a junior, junior pro player? Um, I mean, it, it depends on it depends a lot on uh, ages, the age of the player. Um, I think the younger the players are, I think important to have a mix of other sports as well for developing coordination and those other skills. Yeah. Um, I think important to not overplay. Um, and as you obviously as you get older through 11, 12, 13, you, you know you build up the hours and you build up the intensity. I think it's always important to be able to add to a player's program. You, know, you see a lot of kids that are playing 11 years old, four or five hours a day. Of course, this can sometimes work, but there's not always things to add. So I think that's important. Yeah. Um, I think finding a mix of uh, good training quality and competitiveness. I think really important to um, to make try to um, get the same feeling. You can never really get the same feeling as competition, but to try to have that, like at Reeds, we do a lot of these um, box matches. Yeah. You know, where the players they don't want to lose to each other, so it's uh, it's you, you try to simulate the same a similar feeling to a tournament. Yeah. Um, I think also the players learning to feel uncomfortable when they train, because when you play matches, you're not, you're made to feel uncomfortable by your opponent. Very important. Yeah. And then the last part is obviously a good uh, a good SNC program. Yeah. Um, lots of injury prevention and lots of variety in, in the in the strength and conditioning. Yeah, as you said, when um, younger players need more than one sport, I used to play football, but didn't go too well, so I stuck with tennis. On the topic of hours, Ben, um, how many hours do you say someone like me? I'm 16 years old. How many hours should I roughly be playing a week of tennis and SNC? I suppose. Um, I think there's no reason why you. you you're probably looking, you know, you've obviously you, you, you've matured physically and you're strong. And so I would say you're probably looking to play three, four, three hours a day mm -hmm. of tennis. Um, obviously getting in some good match play. And, and I think you can be doing something SNC every day. Yeah. Well, yeah. something definitely to work, look forward to after this quarantine, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You'll be fit and strong. So uh, question two is, is strength and conditioning training important and how much should you train? Um, I think kind of linked to what we were saying. I think S and C is extreme ex is extremely important um, yeah. because just like just like technique, you're laying good foundations at a young age. You know, obviously the younger players you start with, you're trying to uh, you're doing a lot of injury prevention work. You're balancing the body so that when they get uh, older and they start they start to do more strength work, they don't pick up uh, you know they don't pick up injury. Yeah. Um, so I think S and C. Um, and, and covering all different areas of training, whether it be speed work, biometric work, agility, strength, 
I think if you just have to look at the modern day now, you look, you know, you watch a match between Sitsipas and Djokovic. And, yeah. You know, or Andy, Andy, Andy Murray. You know, when he's in his prime and he's coming back, obviously, hopefully, we'll be back to where he was. Um, these guys are so athletic. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, nowadays, especially because if you look back at like old olden times with wooden rackets, most players were quite slow and they didn't have big muscles like me. <laughs> but like now, you need now you need to be strong. And you know, you know, it's a really good question. You know, an interesting one with that is when you, when you, did you, do you realise? Did you know that when the guys played at Wimbledon back in the probably the six seventies, sixties, seventies, they they weren't, they didn't sit down at change events. Why? They had no chairs, <laughs> and they played, and there was no tie breaks. So they just kept playing. So when you think how fit these guys were, mm. no no sitting down at change events and no tie breaks. So so wow. the, the, the match could be twenty one nineteen, yeah. eighteen sixteen. It's still five sets. Yeah. And all these guys, all these guys used to do for their training was run, and do press ups. Yeah. So uh, you, you, it's right what you're saying, but also to understand, you know, these guys back in the day were obviously athletes in their own way. Yeah. But the game's changed. Obviously, changed a lot. So the next question is. What about the role of no? As in, okay, do that again. So the next question is: How important do you think the role of a mental coach in tennis is? Um, very important. You know, you look at the four four pillars of performance. You know, physical, tactical, <laughs> mental, and technical. Yeah. Obviously, the mental side is uh, is is a huge huge part of the game. Um, I think the mental side should be part of the coach's uh, training every day. I think the coach should be um, looking to work on the mental aspect of, on every session. Um, also working off court with the players with some, some small little things to do some um, to get, their think, get them thinking a little bit more about the mental side. Yeah. And obviously then as you get older, you get some players who gravitate towards uh, you know, having a mental mental coach or a life coach or a sports psychologist that's all horses for courses but there's no doubt that we know that the mental side is probably the most important side of the game yeah especially at my age it's quite hard to keep your cool uh, yeah as, exactly not easy yeah so not easy. so thank you for your insights ben and thank you for answering our questions yeah. it was great having you on the show and we can't wait to have you next week thanks guys thank you ben so guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of The Home Tennis Show. Make sure to send in your challenge videos and we'll see you next time.